kilometers, so you gotta get used to that. And um, and then, of course, you have the virtual pace car. <laughs> um, but anyway, top three lap 15, Kimi Raikkonen, Lewis Hamilton, and Sebastian Vettel. Um, now, Nico Rosberg, oh, I'm gonna go right to it. This is the first wreck, and the only wreck of the night. And this was crazy, okay, so here's what happened. An incident between Esteban Gutierrez, okay, and Fernando Alonso. Gutierrez in number 21, and Alonso in the 14. And here's what happened. This this is crazy. So the 14 car is coming up behind the 21 car. And is trying to pass the 21 car on the 21 car's left side. Clips the left rear tire of the 21 car. But the front left tire of the 14 car just goes flying, just snaps off. Like, like, just snaps off. Two cars now go flying into the sand, because you got the sand out there. One car goes into the sand, just sits there. The other car, the 14 car, just flies into the sand, boom, into the wall. And it's a road course, so they actually came off the course and hit the wall on the outside of the wall. This car went from a couple million dollars of machinery to crumpled metal in about 10 seconds. And uh, it was the craziest thing. When you see these cars crash, it's over. It's not like NASCAR. You know, NASCAR, you hit the wall. If it's not that bad, they stretch the metal out, send you back out there. So if it's not that bad, you can still go out there racing. These cars, they crash. It's it. Day's done. <laughs> it's Day's done. And this was the this is a crazy wreck. This car literally went from a car to the point where you couldn't even recognize that it was a car. It literally, if you, if you took a piece of paper and went like this with it, that's what happened to this 14 car. And that was crazy. And that was really the only big incident. That plus uh, Kimberly Collins, number 7 Ferrari, went on fire. That was another big thing. Um, but it was just a crazy race. Um, but it was fun. It was fun. Um, a little interesting, and so here's the thing, though. I mean, you're only getting like NASCAR gives you a race every week, except for the off weeks. Okay, they have a couple off weeks, uh, but and you get racing from February all the way through November. My goodness, the week before Thanksgiving, all the way up till then, you get a race. And I really think that NASCAR is more Amer well, it is more American, but. You know, as they and they say that Formula One worldwide, okay, gets more eyeballs. In America, though, NASCAR gets more eyeballs, and but NASCAR is gaining world recognition, and because it's, it, I mean, it's number two in TV ratings right after football, and so there you go. To get go from a point where back in the day when NASCAR first started, when the TV networks wouldn't even show the whole race, they only show the last couple of laps, and that was it. Up until the 1979 Daytona 500, which, by the way, if you're on Fox Sports 1, uh, they, the 1979 Daytona 500, The Perfect Storm, which was a documentary they did on FS1, excellent, excellent, I recommend it. Uh, and that was actually, from that point on, the network started uh, jumping on the bandwagon to televise the rate. And in fact, the 1979 Daytona 500, okay, was the first race to be televised from start to finish. And that just catapulted into what NASCAR is now. And it's it's good. That's what I say. Um, so, anyway, so uh, that was it, that big wreck. And Kimberly Cole's car went on fire. He's in, again, the 7 Ferrari. Flames shooting out from the air intake, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, but, yeah. So, Nico Rosberg was the winner right there in the number 6 car. Second place, Lewis Hamilton. Sebastian Vettel finishes third, Daniel Ricciardo fourth, and uh, Felipe Massa finishes fifth. That'll be the sixth, the 44, the five, the 13, and the nine, and uh, that was it. So we got 58 laps in on uh, on Sunday. It was cool. And it was actually dinner time, Australia time, by the time the race was over, um, which is neat. Now, Formula One comes back on uh, next not this week, next weekend. Let me get to the schedule that's coming up. Now, this weekend, there is absolutely no racing at all. Nobody. But, uh, when 
the weekend after, which is April 2nd and 3rd, there's a ton, there's NASCAR, IndyCar, and Formula 1. So you got Kevin World Trucks coming back on April 2nd with the Alpha Energy 250. April 3rd, Sprint Cup comes back with the STP 500, both from Martinsville. The first short track race of the season, and short track racing is fun to watch. Okay, uh, Experience Series returns on April 8th at Texas for the O'Reilly Auto Parts 300. IndyCar returns April 2nd for a Saturday night race, Phoenix International Raceway for the Phoenix Grand Prix. And then Formula One heads to Bahrain on Sunday, April 3rd uh, and for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Now, program note, uh, there will be no RP Full Throttle next Thursday, March 31st, since there's no racing this weekend, we won't have nothing to talk about, but RP Full Throttle will return the following Thursday, April 7th. And let me double check the calendar, make sure I got those dates right. Yes, April 7th, RP Full Throttle returns. However, um, we will do an RP Express on that Thursday, just to update the schedule for the April 2nd and 3rd weekend racing schedule. Um, also, we we'll refresh the driver standings, uh, especially for the Kevin World Truck Series. Uh, we'll do that. So, schedule and uh, driver standings next week, the 31st. So, it'll be two RP Expresses next week, one on Monday and one on Thursday. And the Thursday night RP Express we'll do at 7:45. Be a quick five ten minutes. And, uh, and then April 7th, we'll be back with RP Full Throttle. And then when we do come back on April 7th, we're going to have a ton of stuff to talk about when we get back. So uh, just let you know about that. Stick around. Driver Standings is next. RP. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Spurt Cup driver standings top 10 as follows. Right now, first place is Kevin Harvick. He's with 195 points. Second place, Jimmy Johnson with 184. Carl Edwards sits in third with 171. Denny Hamlin in fourth place. Kyle Busch in fifth place, both with 170 points. Joey Logano in sixth place with 165. Seventh place is Kurt Busch. 8th place, Dale Jr. with 145. Kurt Busch is with 148. Keslowski sits in 9th place with 142. And Austin Dillon sits in 10th with 139. From 11th to 15th place in order, you got Martin Truex Jr., Jay McMurray, Eric Almarola, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and Matt Kenseth. 16th to 20th place, Elliot Sadler, Ryan Blaney, Casey Kane, AJ Allmendinger, and Ryan Newman. From 21st to 25th, Trevor Bain, Paul Menard, Reagan Smith, Kyle Larson, and Brian Scott. Manufacturer standing for the Spring Cup Series, Chevrolet still on top, first place with 210 points. Toyota is in second with 201, and Ford in third with 180. Um, NASCAR Xfinity Series, top 10. First place, Daniel Suarez, the 19 car, 182 points. Elliott Sadler sits in second place, 172. Uh, Brandon Jones in fourth. Ty Dell in, in uh, fifth place, the number three car, 159 points. Brandon Jones with 161. Brandon Gowen in sixth place, the 62 car, 154 points. Eric Jones sits in seventh. Eighth place, Darrell Willis Jr., 134 points. Ryan Reed sits in ninth. And Brandon Napool in tenth, 48 car, with 130 points. From 11th to 15th place, in order, Blake Koch, Jeb Burton, Dakota Armstrong, Jeremy Clements, and Ryan Sag. 16th to 20th place, Russ Chastain, Ryan Priest, J.J. Yelly, B.J. McLeod, and David Starr, who sits in 20th. 21st to 25th, Corey LaHoy, Garrett Smithley, Ray Black Jr., Joey Gase, and Mario Gosselin. Manufacturer standings for Xfinity Series as follows. First place, Toyota, 209 points. Second place is Chevrolet with 201. Ford in third with 177. And Dodge sits in fourth with 35. And Formula One standings, okay. First place, Nico Rosberg. Lewis Hamilton sits in second. 
he's with 18 points. Rosberg with 25 points. Sebastian Vettel in third, 15 points. Daniel Ricciardo in fourth. Felipe Massa in fifth. Romain Grosjean is in sixth place with eight points. Nico Hulkenberg in, in seventh. Valtteri Bottas in eighth. Carlos Sainz in ninth. Max Verstappen in tenth. Julian Palmer sits in 11th, Kevin Magnussen in 12th, Sergio Perez 13th, Jensen Budden in 14th, Felipe Nasser in 15th, and 16th is Pascal Harlan. And uh, there you go. The Home of Brutal Sports Talk Racing Podcast Full Throttle. Stick around because the final stretch is next. All right, so uh, NASCAR graded the drivers from Sunday for uh, Sunday's Auto Club 400. Letter grades, A plus, A, A minus, you know the letter grades. Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick got A pluses. Denny Hamill and Joe Logano got A minuses. Uh, Stenhouse Jr. with an A plus. Chase Elliott with an A. Carl Edwards gets a B plus. AJ Amalnega, A minus. Brad Keselowski, B plus. J. McMurray, A. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Brian Scott, Brian Vickers get a B plus. Ryan Newman with a B. Paul Menard B minus. Lennon Castle B. Casey Mears B minus. He's in the 13 car. Castle in the 38. Clint Boy gets a C plus. Matt Kenseth, Cherubane both get C's. And also Eric Amarola with a C. David Reagan gets a C plus. Reagan Smith with a C. Austin Dillon with a C minus. Kyle Busch B minus. Cole with C plus. Matt B. De- I can never get <laughs> Matt D. Benedetto. I'm Italian. I should know how to pronounce this name. And he gets a C minus in the 83 car. And Casey Kane, they get him an F in the number five car. I wonder if it has something to do with hitting Danica Patrick. Probably, most likely. Michael Lynette gets a C. Also, Kurt Busch, Michael McDowell with a C. Truex Jr., B minus. Chris Bruscia, Jeffrey Earnhardt, and Ryan Blaney get a C minus. Josh Weiss and Greg Biffle get a D. Danica Patrick a B. Kyle Larson gets a C. Alright, so, um, not a lot of news. Penalties, that's about it. Two drivers popped with penalties this week. Uh, Kyle Busch and Danica Patrick. Danica Patrick was penalized for walking on the track apron after getting hit by, uh, Casey Kane. Uh, uh, she got fined with a $20,000 fine and put on probation for the next four races. Uh, Danica Patrick violated sections 12-1, 10.4.2.1a, and 12.a of the NASCAR rulebook. So, a rule enacted in 2015, uh, a driver cannot walk onto the apron. Also, a driver cannot get out of, a, uh, get out of the car. After a wreck, the driver cannot get out of the car until NASCAR officials arrive at the scene. That's the big change they made last, last year. Now, the only exception is if the car is on fire. If the car is on fire, then yes, you can get out of the car. But, if there's no fire, you got to stay in the car until the officials get there. And, and of course, Danica Patrick was getting out to look for Casey Kane. And, you know, tough breaks for her. Um, and, boy, I hope she wins one soon, man. You know, I do got a crush on Danica Patrick. Just so you know. <laughs> right. um, so, a rule. So, 2015. Now, Kyle Busch also gets popped with a penalty, and this was from Saturday's uh, incident. Sa- uh, Kyle Busch, man, uh, from this incident on Saturday, and it, well, it looked like Kyle Busch was going to win this one. So, one, um, he, he got overheard on the radio. Uh, be rating NASCAR, <laughs> okay, and uh, saying that. Uh, that uh, they should have put out a flag after that after this tie went down, but again, it was a white flag. They, it wasn't like the white flag was flying and they didn't, get, they didn't get to the line yet. No, they crossed the line with the white flag. They already crossed the line, so that was it. And uh, he, he he felt that they they should uh, call the caution on it, but that's not what he got the penalty. He got the penalty for. Um, Failure to meet 
media obligations. And if you saw this race on Saturday, he just got out of the car and just walked.